Hey everyone, Chris here, the RC Geek. Uh, you know, telemetry in RC systems isn't necessarily something new, uh, but the distinction has always been that very few have provided a full integrated solution for real-time telemetry. Well, late last year, Spectrum released a whole new line of smart technology products uh, that provides a whole new world in data telemetry and system monitoring on our models. Uh, so the products include, you know, batteries, speed controllers, receivers, and, and really a whole lot more. You know, the batteries talk to the speed controllers, the speed controllers talk to the receivers, which then directly talk with the spectrum radios. So what you get is fully integrated telemetry data available at your fingertips, quite literally. Recently, I've been exploring and playing with uh, the Spectrum Smart Tech, and I'm really liking what it can provide. So I wanted to provide a little discussion on the technology and provide some tips for integrating it into your flying. You know, being primarily an electric flyer, the, the smart ESCs provide a whole myriad of data uh, that was otherwise not readily available very easily. That being said, it's easy to get into a data overload situation, so having some discretion in the data monitoring is good. Uh, also, data telemetry is no replacement for having a full understanding of the capabilities of your airplane and the power system. It's there to complement what you're doing and report on the health of the aircraft and the power system real time. With that in mind, Let's go. All right, first things first, let's talk about the Spectrum Smart Batteries and Chargers. Uh, I've been flying a number of these batteries recently and I'm really happy to report uh, that they're excellent packs. The weight is good and the performance has been excellent. Uh, the one important distinction of these batteries compared to others is that they have self-monitoring capability uh, and store data about the pack usage, including battery chemistry, cycle count, temperature, all of that, uh, in addition to custom data tailored to charging uh, using the Spectrum Smart Chargers. All of this is handled through a microchip connected to the battery, uh, and the data is read on the smart chargers uh, through an additional data wire in the connectors. Now, to get the most out of the smart batteries, uh, they're best served using them in conjunction with a smart charger. In putting this together, I tried out the S150 uh, AC mini smart charger and the S1500 DC charger, both of which I found extremely easy and intuitive to use. The S1500 provides a full complement of data along with the full programming features on the smart battery packs, where the S150 provided a simple single button charge solution. Now the S150 is about as simple a charger as you can get, uh, featuring just a single button interface for selecting the charge, current, and battery type. Uh, being only 50 watts, it's not very high power, uh, so it's limited to a max charge of five amps. It's really best suited for, you know, charging the smaller packs. We don't need really high charge rates uh, for rapid charging. Now the S1500 is the highest power charger in the line at 500 watts power output uh, and is a really nice setup. Uh, this charger can charge at rates up to 20 amps. The interface uses a touch wheel that allows you to scroll through the menus and data displays around a button which is used to start the desired functions. There are three total windows available to view uh, which provide different parameters from the batteries. The touch wheel is a really elegant solution for scrolling through menus uh, compared to the typical push buttons that you might get on other chargers. Overall, I was very impressed with the smart charging systems that uh, they were simple to use, worked well and charged quickly, which is a benefit to the cell monitoring. Now, given the care and handling of lithium polymer batteries, having so much data from them at your fingertips is extremely nice. It provides a good characterization of the health of the pack, which is really nice to have. Now, the heart of the smart systems are the receivers and speed controllers. There are a whole host of ESCs available, allowing up to eight cells, uh, and 100 amps. Now the batteries talk to the speed controllers while the speed controllers talk to the receivers, which in turn sends data to the transmitter via telemetry. The result is full data of the power system available real time at any point, uh, whether you're on the ground or in flight. Uh, the data includes the volts, amps, temperature, as well as the individual cell voltages if desired. Additionally, alerts can be set up uh, that alarm when a battery isn't fully charged at plug-in, uh, or if the voltage gets too low in flight, things like that. This is a beautiful thing because I'm sure I'm not the only one who's flown an already flown battery, only to realize it two laps into the flight uh, when the power system quits. Now, if you're planning to use smart, 
uh, you'll most certainly need to update your transmitter airware uh, to be compatible with the new features. You'll find a whole host of additional screens available that provide all of the telemetry data uh, once you do. These can be set up, tuned, and turned on uh, and off within the telemetry menu. Uh, the important ones to note are the ESC and smart battery uh, telemetry options. In the telemetry menu, select the option and then select it again uh, to enter that submenu to adjust any of the telemetry parameters uh, that you want to adjust. Within these menus is where you can program the limits uh, and any alarms that you want on any of the parameters such as the pack voltage, temperature, the min-max voltage, min-max amps, things like that. Uh, generally, the setup is quite simple and mostly automated. Uh, I'm still using the DX-based radio, so accessing the data is done by scrolling the wheel from the home screen. Uh, and that's, this will show you all of the available telemetry screens. Oh, and one thing I should note uh, that at the time of this video, uh, there is a bug in the DX airware that when the plug-in voltage alarm is on, uh, it results in a low voltage alarm in flight when the batteries hit 3.8 volts per cell. Uh, so for now, I've turned that option off, uh, and I do expect that there will be an airware update to fix that. Uh, and then once that's fixed, I do plan to turn that back on because it's really nice to have. Now, with all of this data available quite literally at our fingertips, uh, it is important to be smart in how we set up the smart tech. The reason I say that is that it's very easy to get into a data overload situation since now there's so much telemetry data available from the system. It's there to be used as a tool and with the right alerts can be integrated simply and easily into your flying without too much disruption or intrusion. That being said, uh, you know, none of this data should replace just knowing your aircraft and knowing the limitations in the power system. Also, it should not replace setting a timer as well. You know, the telemetry data should be there to augment your knowledge and understanding of the aircraft uh, as you fly and on the ground. But my recommendation would be to focus on what's most important to monitor the health of the power system. On the ground, use the telemetry screens to get a good understanding and knowledge of the power system. Especially if it's a new power system in a new airplane, do some ground runs and answer the questions. You know, what is the current draw? And is that within the ESC range? Uh, what is the battery voltage under load? Is the system getting hot? Things like that. This will give you a good understanding uh, and will also allow you to set a good first flight timer until you have a few flights in on the airplane. Now in flight, my general approach is less is more as it's mostly about setting up some meaningful alarms. First of all, uh, I found it nice to know periodically what the amps, volts, and temperature are while flying. I have an audible report set up on switch I, uh, which is the push button on the top of the radio. This report is set in the custom voice setup menu uh, and can be assigned to any switch easily enough. Uh, I find that I don't use this much, uh, but it is nice to have once in a while. Otherwise, I only just have a low voltage alarm set up, which is basically an oh crap alarm if I ignore my timer. The low voltage alarm really is battery specific and is set up in the ESC telemetry menu. Most of my experience uh, with Smart in flight uh, to this point has been with the E-Flight P51 Mustang, uh, using a Spectrum 6S 5000 smart battery. Uh, so for that airplane, I still leverage my timer as my basis, uh, but I also have the low voltage alarm set to sound at a minimum voltage of 20.4 volts. That equates to about 3.4 volts per cell. Now as mentioned, this is my oh crap alarm, meaning that if it hits, I must land immediately. Now expect that you may have to adjust that voltage depending on uh, how much current your system is pulling, if you're pulling a lot of amps, the voltage drop is gonna be higher in the battery. Uh, so you're gonna to have to adjust that. There's not really a one size fits all here. It's gonna be based on your capacity and how much amps uh, to set up a meaningful alarm there. Now, unfortunately, there's not a capacity used calculation or displayed yet, but hopefully that will come at some point, as I think that will simplify a lot of this uh, when it comes to you know going from aircraft to aircraft. So those are my thoughts, guys. You know, I tell you what, I'm really looking forward to using this technology more going forward on some future projects. And I actually already have some projects in mind for this. It's definitely nice to have so much data available 
uh, and the engineer in me loves it. You know, engineers love data. The more data, the better. <laughs> Uh, but that being said, it is important to be smart about the setup. So keep it simple and stick to the essentials that you need to augment your knowledge of the aircraft performance uh, and flight time. All right, guys, that is it. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to follow along on social media at the RC Geek. Subscribe. Uh, and until next time, I'll see you at the field.